So I am just going to briefly switch gears a little bit here, and, and we are going to talk about the opportunities that machine learning represents in, in improving ethical and equitable data science. And I, I also want to thank Michael for setting the stage and providing very succinct and, and good definitions of equitable data science. So uh, as most of you are probably well aware, machine learning has uh, resulted in a number of big wins in the last five to 10 years in diverse areas such as computer vision and natural language processing. The examples that I have here are three examples from, from the health data science field. On the left, one in computer vision, very famous paper on a deep learning model for diabetic retinopathy. The one on the right, a very famous paper as well of a reinforcement learning algorithm for uh, protein structure prediction called uh, AlphaFold. And the one in the bottom, which is called BioBird from the natural language processing literature as a model to embed medical context for the purposes of better uh, natural language processing algorithms in clinical practice. However, machine learning hasn't been able to provide big wins in some scenarios. So I am going to tell you a little bit about one of such scenarios. And for that, I am going to use one use case that ties very nicely into the questions of um, equity. And, and this is precisely one question about a stroke risk prediction. And this is a part, I, I am going to use an example of a study that is called Regards. Um, but first, let me tell you that stroke is the third leading cause of death in the US, um, is the leading cause of disability in the US. And it is well understood by now that more blacks die from stroke than whites. However, early work in stroke um, had uh, prioritized uh, uh, Caucasian populations for one reason or another. And the REGARD study was created specifically to understand factors of risk, but trying to understand differences between uh, different races and, and geographic differences. As, as you can see in the bottom right, there is a marked difference in race and geographic location in the participants of the study. We are talking about north of 30,000 uh, participants. Now, from the perspective of modeling clinical decision support and machine learning, the goal is estimating risk in an accurate and equitable way to aid with better prevention strategies. Um, now, the problem is that in, in situations like risk prediction, machine learning models do not necessarily work better than relatively simple um, statistical alternatives. So the table that you have on the, on the bottom shows performance characteristics of different models. And what, what I want to draw your attention to is the second and the third columns that present overall performance characteristics of four different models larger numbers closer to one are better. And what you can see is that a very uh, well understood classical model proposed in the 70s has almost the same performance than a more sophisticated machine learning model that was proposed five, six years ago. However, if you start looking closely at the performance characteristics of those models, what we realized is that that original model that has good overall performance characteristics has poor calibration. Now, since I am aware that, that not all of you might be familiar with the concept of calibration, let me just give you a, a very broad idea of that. So if we were to take the prediction from the model, and then we call that predicted risk, and we were to plot them against the actual risk observed retrospectively, we want those to be correlated pretty nicely. So we want them to follow that blue line. If our predictions are above the blue line, we are underestimated risk. If, if they are below the blue line, we are overestimated risk. So what happens is that if we take the predictions from this very well-established uh, model, which is called Cox proportional hazards, what we realize if you look at the figure on the right is that we are uh, overestimating risk for both 
black and white patients, but then overestimation of risk is worse in white patients, meaning that we are underestimating risk on black patients, despite the fact that black patients have a higher a baseline risk uh, for stroke. Now, if we take the more sophisticated model, the one proposed around 2016, which we call DeepServe, as you can see, comparing the plot from the top and the bottom, well, the model is better calibrated. Now, it doesn't have uh, performance characteristics, what we call C-index, that are significantly better than this very well-established statistical model. But in terms of calibration, you can see not only that visually, but quantitatively, the differences are very large. And at the same time, we see that not only the model is better calibrated, but there are smaller differences between the risks that are being estimated for Black and white individuals, which means that these risk estimates provide better equitable access to preventive uh, strategies. So now the conclusion of this very simplified use case is that there is an unmet opportunity for machine learning to, instead of trying to push for um, improved overall performance metrics to try to improve equitable metrics that improve the usability and equity of machine learning in clinical practice. But then at the same time, there's an unmet opportunity to improve machine learning models to directly optimize uh, those models in the context of equity to further improve um, the, the performance of these models in terms of equity. Thank you.